Bless the Lord, everybody. No, sir. Bless the Lord, everybody. Praise God. Good to have you here and good to be with you one more time in our fast and prayer service here at Increasing Faith Deliverance Ministries. I'm Apostle Richard Fagan here to raise you know, another level of faith and grace in the Lord. We believe that fasting and prayer still addresses some stuff. Deep cleansing, deep healing, deep restoration with the Lord. And it's about getting deeper in God. Amen. Uh, we, we know that it's all about it. Sometimes there has to be a point when you, you, you abase the flesh to get deeper in the spirit. Hallelujah. And it helps the spirit man to, to keep things in the right order. To make the priorities, keep the priorities in the right standing. That it is God first. Amen. And we know that is the system by which the kingdom of God is governed and those in the kingdom knows to always put the Lord first. Amen. Praise God. So we're here. Thank God for you being here. Those who are watching us online, thank you for taking the time out to do so. We praise God for you and we pray that as you worship with us today, your heart will be strengthened in your faith in the Lord and your communion and fellowship with the Lord will increase and you see greater results, manifestation and demonstration of his Holy Spirit in your life. Amen. Praise God. So let's lift our hands and just acknowledge our Heavenly Father in the house. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for another occasion to be here to raise our praise among some people and to encourage them in their faith because we know, Lord God, this world is passing away. But those who are of you, God, know that you are here and your kingdom reigns forever. It is an everlasting kingdom. And you said, oh God, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. But you are preparing our hearts for a new body. Hallelujah. That is a permanent one that will endure that environment. And if we are faithful in this, then we can be faithful in that. And so we are walking out the line of obedience and commitment and humility and developing and girt nurturing the character and nature of Christ within us that truly we will truly walk as true children of God and gain the inheritance you have for us in Christ Jesus. And so we pray right now that every thought, every imagination, every feeling, every view that exalts itself against your knowledge that will be brought into captivity and into obedience to you right now and that your grace and favor will surround us like a shield that will give us clear minds clear understanding of your word and that indeed we will gain grace to apply your word in every area of our lives and see it's reap the full rewards in Jesus' name come on give God a praise one more time hallelujah Hallelujah. Okay, we're going to get some praise in here that will be able to live you up because it's so kind of. Uh, hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. You're here to praise the Lord today. Uh, no, sir. You're here to praise the Lord today. Uh, you're here to praise the Lord today. So like you we know, no, have to wait. And we come like the alarm, alarm clock, and say, wake up. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. But it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to what? Sing praises unto his name. And that's what we're gonna do. Because the word of God says, A merry heart do it well like medicine. Glory to God. But a broken spirit dries up, he says, eat the bones. Hallelujah. So it's good to be merry. The word of God said, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Hallelujah. So let's give God some praise in here now. Come on, give him a praise. Come on, give him a praise. Hallelujah. I don't know what you came to do. I don't know what you came to do. 
I just came to clap my hands. I just came to step my feet. I just came to pray the Lord. Oh, when I sing to the Lord, I bring you a song. Lord, our hearts is ringing. Clap your hands, stand your feet. Come on, let's pray the Lord. Hey, I don't know. Hey, I don't know. Okay. I just came to clap my hands. I just came to step my feet. I just came to pray. Shut up.
Jesus. Come on, somebody know it's coming. Got to have a praise on this. You know you're serving God. Are you glad about it? Anybody got a praise on it? Come on, clap those hands and stand your feet. Hey.
unto the Lord. Amen. Without which we shall not see him. Praise God that he calls us to live holy. And he said, I am holy. And he said, you must be holy. Hallelujah. For he is holy. And he gives us his Holy Spirit to live that life. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Holy Spirit came to empower us to live the life of God. Hallelujah. In human flesh and the real. That greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Praise God. Got some testimonies here. Want to hear them? Praise God. Hallelujah. Why you can know that um, Satan don't like praise in cause all this man who come in like him want to uh, lock off my voice. That no usually happens to me. I don't really speak loud and whatever, but when I praise. When I get into that zone with the Lord, man, it's just a wonderful thing. It's like you don't even know yourself. <coughs> Sorry. Um, but, you know, I just want to thank God for this ministry and for the man of God. He has done so much for me and my family through the, the leading of the Holy Spirit. I know if I wasn't here, probably I would be out of my mind probably even dead i can you know i can say oh, that Jesus. i am so happy to be a part of god's family here and that um he chose me to come here because if i believe that everybody that comes here god has a special purpose for them coming and linking up with the man of god and it's truly a great privilege that we shouldn't take for granted. I want to also thank God for the, the faith teaching here and the, the teaching of expectancy and hope in the Lord because the devil oftentimes uses doubt to keep us from our breakthrough. So I'm really happy for the, the emphasis on faith here and expectancy. And I know and believe and I can testify that great things have happened in my life because of the teaching of expectancy here. And, you know, we just need to submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from us. All we have to do, yes, Apostle, we just have to submit to who God has said to us and we'll be okay, God. Uh, has put us into good hands here, great hands here. We, we don't yes. even realize sometimes, but I never want to take that for granted, and we shouldn't. If, if just always remember that, because even if you don't understand, once you submit to the voice of the Holy Spirit and who He has sent to you, you will be okay. So I just want to just um, empower everybody to keep expecting for the best, and you know just submit just submit to the Lord through the leading of um, Apostle Richard Pagan you cannot go wrong and I just want to praise God today for just blessing me in this way that I could be here come on praise God for that come on give God the glory you know many people will just teach about just submitting to God but they don't understand your submission to God is connected to who God sends to you hallelujah because God always sends one hallelujah to bring about what he wants to establish in your life and as you connect with who God has sent grace is released to you hello somebody and some may take it in a negative way but we know who have trusted in those who God have sent that that has been a stepping stone that has brought another shifts and changes in our lives because we connected with those who the Lord wanted us to connect with and really allowed God to do through them in us what we could not do for ourselves and that was how things turned around for us and the same thing is still available in the house today for those that trust in the Lord hallelujah they can trust who the Lord has sent. Amen. And the Holy Spirit will lead them to those who he has sent. Praise God. Hallelujah. Any more testimony you want to hear them? Praise God. Hallelujah.
restaurant. Hallelujah. Yes, Margaret. I want to tell God thanks for favoring me this morning. Praise God. Um, I know that um, last month I, I want to be here, but I couldn't be here. Mm. But I keep praying and I keep watching the ceremony online to help build my faith and to, <laughs> to keep me strong in God because you know last year um, when I had the cancer um, I did have the clot in my lungs yes and this year um, <laughs> the clot have gone Praise God. And I have to give God thanks for that. Yes, ma'am. And now they say that the doctor says, right? But Apostle always says, whose report that we believe in is <laughs> God. Praise God. And I know that God that removed that clot from my lungs. I know you're going to remove that cancer from my lungs also. Because I believe and trust in God. Yes. And that's I want right. to tell Apostle thanks for sending me the healing scriptures. That's what's keeping me yes. alive. That was strengthening me. Yes. You know, sometimes I wake up in the night and I cannot go back to sleep. But um, I just turn it on because Apostle said I must listen as often as I can. That's right. Yes. And I know that my healing is coming because I believe in God and I. I know I made a dedication to him by word of baptism. Mm. I'm not giving up. Praise I'm keeping God. my faith. I know mm. the devil is fighting me. I know I never have to. I, I didn't have the strength this morning to keep me here. I was walking. Mm. Hallelujah. I was walking. I feel so weak in my feet, in my whole body. I started to feel so dizzy, you know. But I know that the devil is trying to hold me down from not being here. Uh, but I tell myself that I'm going to be here this morning. Right and I have here. to come out and praise God because yes. God is providing for me. Hallelujah. God is keeping me yes, is. alive and strengthening me. I came into increase in faith not to give up, but to mm. praise God and give That's him right. all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, I want to thank God for possible for he prayed for me. Hallelujah. Mm. Praise he God. He prayed for me. Yes. Because this cancer, sometimes I have so many pains. But I pray, as a pastor said, I must think about the pain. Mm. I start to keep praying. And I faith in God. Because I know that my healing is coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give God the praise. Your healing is here, dear. Praise God. God, is, if God wasn't dealing you, it would take you out already. Because there are others who have passed on because of it. But God is keeping you. And from the day you walk in this place, God's been keeping you from that thing. Because the devil, the, de the doctors had spoken already that you've already passed on. But what made you still here today? All right, God is keeping you. Come on. God is keeping you. And the same God that did it before, he'll do it again. Hallelujah. And he's a faithful God. He is a faithful God. We can always trust him and know that he will keep and come true on his word. Amen. Praise God. So be strong in the Lord. You know, the devil, the devil likes when we see us in weakness because he prowls upon the weak. But the Lord said, let the weak say, I am strong. Hallelujah. It's not, it's not a lie. It's to prophesy. To speak in according with the word of God. And to agree with his word. Hallelujah. An agreement in his word brings favor and grace to us to overcome any issues that the enemy has launched against us. Say hello somebody. Yes, yeah, so keep on believing the word. Don't be gloomy and sad about it. That will only break down your immune system more and give the devil more areas to come in to increase the attack. But be strong in the Lord. 
the word of God says Abraham his body was near dead and his wife's womb was dead but he said he did not consider the state of his flesh nor consider the state of his wife's womb but he then had confidence and trusted in God against all odds so there are some odds that are speaking against you that you have to use your faith and come against to overcome you can't agree with the odds and win against the odds you got to have faith against all odds he says he believed God so the, the Abraham never heard of anyone uh, being old and, and, and having a, a wife that is barren from youth and past childbearing stage not of a child but what Abraham believed God against those odds and God still delivered upon the word so it's not about what happened with other people it's about your faith with God and God is watching that your faith with him your faith will unleash his power in your life and the word of God said it in Hebrews 4 verse 2 that they heard the gospel just as we did but it didn't profit them anything because what they did not mix the word with faith you mix the word with faith for your healing you will be healed no one ever came for healing to the Lord with faith and the Lord says you're not gonna be healed no he healed them all he healed them all so only the point person will submit when a person say boy I'm tired of this I don't need to go on and fight in this anymore I want to be with the Lord if your soul is safe with the Lord fine you can do that but if you've got more work to do here and believe that God's work is not finished with you here and you have more sign to carry out then you have all right to claim healing because healing is the children's bread and as a child of God it belongs to you is that benefit that you have but you have to claim it right so that's why David said bless the Lord of my soul and forget not all his benefits and he refers it there who, who forgive all my sins who heal all my diseases come on now that's Psalms 101 verse 2 I believe praise God Psalm 103 verse 2 praise God Right, so you see that it refers there to forgiveness of all sins and it also refers to heals all your diseases, not some. He don't forgive some of your sins and leave some. The same thing apply that he doesn't heal some disease and leave some. He heal all. And David said it's a benefit. Hallelujah. And he said, so if he says forget not his benefits, it means you can forget it. You can be working a place and know you have that benefit and don't claim it. And same way, the benefit is there for you with the Lord. But you have to claim it. And if you claim it, God will not deny it from you. God is not unjust. What, what he says, if you come by faith, whoever seeks, finds. Whoever knocks the door open, whoever asks, receives. Come on. Hallelujah. So we're encouraging you to be strong in him and in the power of his might. Anyone testimony now is going to hear them in the house today. Praise God. Give you a chance to tell of his goodness. Praise the Lord, church. Praise God. Church, um, you know, the song where they said, I must have the Savior with me, for I dare not walk alone. Mm. I must feel his presence near me with his arms around his throne. Then my soul shall fear no evil. Let him lead me where he is. Church, tell you the truth, you know. Tell the truth. Sometimes I don't sleep in my house. From this happened to me, I don't sleep really. Sometimes I sleep on the road. Sometimes I sleep in the market. I am not afraid to tell you. I'm not ashamed of it. Because I have never been this afraid before. Never. Anything will come against me. Name war. I always war it out with the word of God. I always war it with prayer. I always war it with God. There's a sister of mine that said, I need to pack up and leave Moby. She passed note me and tell me that. 
Because I'm not supposed to be a mobile like come and get shot. Because I don't know if the man them will come back. But then I never answer the voice note. I listen to the voice note and I put, it, I put the phone aside and I say, no, I'm not answering. But there's a word that come to me. If God ever lose a backer, that's it. If God ever lose, God never lose no war. So I'm going to run out of man to go be Right? When I'm going to run out of man to go be I'm going to a different place. And I carry the same destruction with me. Suppose when I go to Ochi, I'm going to Kingston, and the same thing. I may get a straight one this time. When knock me out, I'm going to come back. But if I stand up and fight the war with God, we up against me. Then we will win. And a vice note and I tell her. And she, the only thing she could have said to me is amen in the vice note. She texts me back and says, Amen. Church, church. May I walk in a fear? I'm so afraid. I've never been this fear afraid before. I've never been this afraid before in all my life. I'm get saved. I get saved when I'm 23. And I've never, never been this afraid before. And this made me free even. Sleeping at the house. Last time I come out after one, I'm gonna go out the street go sit down. Sit down until after six this morning. The night before is the same thing. The night before is the same thing. From me here the gate pull and the dark start ball it get me just, me just come out the window and peep to one hole and if me not see nobody you see me take time open the door church I'm gonna fly out down a road like my better for sitting on the street more than in the house. I don't fetch you a boat house. I don't fetch you a boat house, but I just have this fear upon me. Like the other day, the other night, I go down to the ground. Church, I go down to the ground. I'm not telling a lie. I go down to the ground. Church, I go down to the ground. I'm not telling a lie. I have an ice break. I put on the ice break three times. I put on the ice break and grab it up. I say, God, suppose I demand them. Suppose if anything, I'm going to angle it. I can't stop them. I'm going to do it, God. I'm going to put it down and start a prayer. But then again, my foot them just weak, 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 and then my heart beat fast, fast. And I said, no, I forget something. Today, to the church, today, I just, when I was telling the device, I just take up myself and I said, I watch me, I watch them, I said, I'm not coming to church, you know. But then again, I said, no, I said, no, if I go to church, I go lose, but if I go to church, I go win. I have to win this war. And only way I can win this war is in a God. Because I've never, never, never been afraid before. I never afraid like this before, and the whole of war come upon me when I use God and back of them. I know my God is real, right? Because I'm saying, I'm saying, I walk alone, so I don't know if I walk in a fear to reach the stage where I get shot. I mean, if I walk in a fear, I'm not supposed to walk in a fear. I know I'm supposed to have God to fight my back for me. I walk in a fear because of the enemy. Church, I ask you to pray for me. Pray for me because this, I have to stay in the fear. Yeah. I have to slay that fear. That fear I have to go on. That fear I have to go on my foot. I have to slay it. I ask the church to pray for me. I know my pastor constantly pray for me. Just constantly pray for my pastor that I may pull on the fear out of me and walk like any child of God. God bless the church. Come on, give God the praise. Oh, it's time to renew your covenant with the Lord. Because I told you that already, it's time to, to renew your covenant with the Lord. Because it is important that your soul be well with the Lord. When people's soul are well with the Lord, they can tell themselves they are well, but their spirit knows it is not well. And there's a fear that you cannot, you cannot debate away. You cannot argue away because it is God that gives you that peace to let you face death and not be afraid. It's God that gives you that peace. I tell you that that's not something the flesh can give to you. That is something you get from the Holy Spirit. And the word of God says the kingdom of God is not meat nor drink, but it is righteousness and peace and what? Joy in the Holy Ghost. And it says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love and of power and of what? sound mind so he says it what what is that spirit that he gave us that is not a spirit of fear the holy spirit that's right so you, you you need to not just have the holy spirit with you but you need to have it dwelling in you 
For the word of God said the Holy Spirit was with the disciples. But even when the Holy Spirit was with them, Peter denied him. And Peter was afraid for what was happening to Jesus to happen to him. But when the Holy Spirit was in Peter, that same Peter, when they told him, if you're preaching that name, you will die. He said, if I don't preach in that name, I will die. Come on. You see, there's a difference when the Holy Spirit is with you and when the Holy Spirit is in you. Come on now. And Jesus spoke to his disciples about that. So there's a time when the Holy Spirit was with them and they found that when the, the shepherd was, was caught and there was being um, uh, manhandled by people, many of the disciples scattered. But when the Holy Spirit came upon them, they weren't scattered. They stood ground. In fact, it said it in Acts 8 that when the persecution came against the church, all the saints were scattered except the apostles. See? Because now the Holy Spirit was in them. There's a difference when it's in. And we want you to have that experience. Not that the Holy Spirit visits you or just be with you, but that the Holy Spirit lives in you. And it says that Holy Spirit is the seal unto your salvation. It is this, the, the down payment towards the guaranteed position in terms of the redemption of your body. So the Holy Spirit means a lot. It says the Holy Spirit is the witness, the inner witness within us that testify to our spirit that we are children of God. And it says those who have Christ have that witness in themselves. Have that witness in themselves. Hallelujah. And so we want you to know that you will get that real commitment with the Lord straight and get back your life back in order with the Lord and, and allow the Lord to, to renew and to refresh you and to reposition you in his house that, that those things that the enemy is riling up around around you to threaten you to push your way to destroy your life will be dealt with by the presence and the anointing of God and that's what it is because I tell you persons in here sister Foster was held at gunpoint and, and, and uh, fear tried to come upon her too but the spirit of the Lord being present the spirit of the Lord being present because the gunman came to shoot her and her two children before her face. Uh, but but the, the spirit of the Lord being upon her caused her to rebuke him and bind and plead the blood and he left. And none of them were shot. You know, so when you abide in the word and the word abide in you, you are going to have a different result. Are you hearing me? And that's why we say it's not just to trust in the Lord, but it's also to trust in whom the Lord has sent. And that's where you have your security. The safety is in that body, in the body of Christ. That's why the Lord turned it on your spirit, not just to stay home and wash, but to connect with the body, the body of Christ, the church. Because that's where he says the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church is the only body he tell you the gates of hell will not prevail against the church come on somebody so you got to believe and embrace the word hallelujah and see what the lord brings you into as you do that amen any more testimony now as we want to hear them praise the lord let's praise the lord let's praise god hallelujah I just want to give God thanks for being here today in this house of power, prayer, and praise, increasing faith, healing, and deliverance ministries under the leadership and covering of Apostle Richard Vaughn Fagan. I give God thanks for his blessing, his protection, his covering, his healing, his guidance, his provision, and so many things. I want to give him thanks for making me into a new species, not just a new, not a new creature, but a new creation, a part of his body, because he never had to do that. He never had to call me. He never had to give him the chance to answer. He never had to give him the chance or the choice to be here. And I don't want to take none of that for granted, because so many persons have been called every day 
They either reject the call, neglect it, and think that they have time. Some persons are not here anymore because they have gone out and they have less issues than I had to deal with. And they are not here. So I just want to give God thanks for all of that and for where he has sent me. Because the Lord knows, as I've always said, what's your need. He knows what's your need. So he's not going to send you to a pharmacy to buy two patties. And left there like extended ear where they sell food. You understand? He, he's not going to send you down the road to take a flanker's car when you really want to go to Kingston. He's not going to send you to a dermatologist when he's a neurologist you need to see. So the Lord knows where to send you and who to send you to. And sometimes we take for granted, like we say, my mind tell her for God, so mind tell her for do this, mind tell her for stop that, or mind tell her this. It's not your mind, it's God. Because God knows what he's doing. And God is an on time God. You hear? God is an on time God and he, he, he knows exactly what he wants, he knows everything. You now, I was listening to one of my dad's teaching this morning about. Um, on Sunday that he did on Sunday I was listening about the body that Christ had to put off to put on to put on to come to save us and I take that personally you know because as I said he never had to do none of that for us and you know I was just thinking I was laughing to myself and say see it on a copycat you know because him did and I try to make people put on a farm too but this is not a flesh and blood thing this is a spirit thing is a spiritual thing it's not about you just put on one woman church or decide say you're a man again you're a woman because that's what he's doing to the people in the world making them put on a farm say them and a man them no so them no want a woman them want a man and the woman no want a man them want another farm them. god has done what he has done and he does he did it perfect it's perfect how he did it and you know god has not just it's not about changing your outside. It's an internal thing to, to transform your whole being. It's your spiritual being that has been transformed. Because if you don't get that transformation from the inside, then when things are happening outside, you will not be insulated with the power and the praise and the grace of God. You will not be insulated with the presence of God. And I just want to give God thanks for that, to be insulated by the presence and the covering and the leadership of God because you know when I think of where God has brought me from and where I could have and should have been boy you don't want to know I remember once when I was younger uh, the child that they used to I live I am from Kingston you know dad was talking to us there the morning and say so many of us come from different places we never knew that we didn't just come together so for be one big family and you know with different issues different circumstances different different nation different different nations are going to come in a diff, different form you know that you were in some of us prostitution madness you know different things sicknesses all kinds of a different form but you know they turn different creatures sinfulness you, 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 you're imprisoned in all of that and couldn't come out you cry out but you couldn't come out you try to get help but you couldn't get you couldn't get away now the lord send you somewhere that someone can keep you, sustain you, retain you, and show you how to stay safe. And I was thinking some days ago how when I was younger, that I, I grew up in an area that they call Raytown, Paradise Street, Winward Road the area. And I, I, um, I live near Bellevue. So this is my yard, and Bellevue is on that side. And I remember my auntie-in-law somehow encouraged my mother that I need some counseling and they did not go to no psychiatrist outside they made me go in over Bellevue yeah they sent me over Bellevue because them things said me gone me cuckoo I wasn't doing anything out and a weird way but them just think so and when I came down here and I, was, I got married to my husband and I said so does his family his family was some of them was saying they say it as a joke and they do it that I'm mad but you know what I'm glad about Jesus because when everybody else write you off and do all kind of things to you and push you aside and use you and abuse you and sex you out and, and you know, just do all what they want to do to you. Because as dad said, you were made to be used, but sometimes you're getting at the wrong hand, so you're used wrongfully. You're not plugged into the right connection. So you no know, breeze can't come from you, nothing good can't come from you because you connect wrong. You know, I just want to give God thanks for reconnecting me. 
I want to give God thanks for making me be reborn, for giving me a chance to be born again. Not just saying that I'm a Christian and I'm a whole church prayer and I'm a God church, but I am I'm born again. Because that's the only way you get to be getting a renewed mind. That's the only way you can get a new body be, being prepared for you. That's the only way that God can transform you. I, I just want to give God thanks for that. I want to give God thanks that the day he sent me here, that I can stand before you now and talk about the goodness. The goodness. When you hear me talk about the goodness of God, I am speaking the truth about the goodness of God because I've ex experienced the badness of being out there in the world, but I experienced the goodness and it is nothing to be compared to what I had on the outside. I was a person that... I couldn't walk up and down and look behind me and all that. I, I, could, I should have been diagnosed with AIDS. But God didn't allow that to happen. And I'm happy about that. Because when I got connected with the wrong source, man upon man and do this and that, when one drop, one stand and one whatever, east, west, north, so they can check on my hands how many and over the amount. Man. And when I look at that, and I wasn't, Getting myself involved with sexual, sexually with no condom, no, not at all. Just beer. Just beer. And I just want to give God thanks that he gave me the chance to, to stand bare before him. That he can change what he wanted to change and make me be what I am, I am today. And I'm glad for that. And he's still working on me. He's still doing a great job. And I want to tell him thanks. Ah, so many times we just take it for granted, get up, we can move around, we can do this, and we can, do it, we can eat, we can hold our drinks, we can say what we want, feel, feel what we want, and just get it, and think that is life, but it is not life. Because I get up and I feel for sex, and yeah, that happened. I get up and I look at a man and I say, yeah, I must stay with you, I must stay with you, and that happened. But that wasn't life, that was death. That was nothing for me, that was death. And I never knew until I came to this house how dangerous, what a dangerous part me there, you know. What a dangerous position. I, 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 I lost my life. I was a walking dead. I was lined up. You know the song said that you're next in line for your blessing. Me the next in line for hell. I was just going straight to hell. Me not play, me not talk, me not run no joke with it. I was heading straight to hell until God. Even when I was diagnosed, yes, I was diagnosed with leukemia from 2016 and when I was diagnosed with leukemia, I, I, I was still doing my own thing. I was still doing, living anyhow I wanted to live and stuff. And yes, I had all the symptoms of pain and whatever else and this and that. But you see, when you're in a sin, you can't. Like my dad was saying on Sunday, when David committed that sin that he committed, it takes a prophet to make him know when he's the inner. The slave can't take you. Then I got dip you far and farther. Because guess what was happening to me? When I talk to a man and the man hurt me, I'm going to pick up one next one. I am come with him sweet words and sweet words. I think it's a difference, my dear. I think so, yes. Make this going to work out this time. Not realizing that it's the same spirit they use them. So I'm not going to get no better. It's worse and worse. You ever hear the scripture where we talk about works worse and worse? That's what was happening to me. And I just want to, you, you, you must have. You must have something in your life now as a child of God to look back on and say that thank God no more. Thank God no more. Thank God I am not this. I don't say this. I can't go. I, I can't connect myself that way anymore. Because honestly, sometimes I think we just sit down and just say, yeah man, God, God good. And that's why we're just taking blood and just do what we want. But I'm just so grateful this morning. I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm set free. Do you know what it is to be set free? Do you know what it is to lay down in your bed and when you lay down beside the man, the man asleep and you can't sleep because you're worried about the woman with him there with. And when him wake up and tell you, say, you're lucky, say, you're lucky, say, you're not asleep. And you did not fret about him. No, I sleep in my bed. I wake up. I do what I want to do. I want to give God thanks. I want to say hallelujah. I want to praise God. I want to thank him for this opportunity. I want to thank him for this privilege. You don't have no cancer. They diagnosed you with it. But you don't have it. 
You don't have it. Stop saying mine. It's not yours. You are a new species in Christ. You don't have it. They diagnose this with it. You don't have it. You're a spirit being in God. You don't have it. You, it takes a Moses to get your cross. It takes a Moses to get you across the Red Sea. It takes a Moses for you to know the Egyptian you see today. You won't see them tomorrow. It takes a Moses. You cannot do it by yourself. You can't get out by yourself. You can't heal yourself. You can't deliver yourself. You can't save yourself. Your money can't save you. Your house can't save you. That man can't save you. The woman that can't save you. Your hairstyle can't save you. Your bleach on body can't save you. It takes Jesus. And whom he has chosen for you to go to, to be saved. I couldn't help myself. I couldn't get out. I, I got saved about 18 years old and I couldn't get out. I was just going one at a time. One of the men, when he was on me, I was saying, God, when are you going to take me out of this? I became tired of sex. I became tired of who I had become. I, I became tired and I couldn't help myself. I couldn't come out by myself. But God sent me somewhere i've been to other churches you must have heard me said that over i have been to other churches but i was still with a married man i was still earning money but when i got sick where were they they couldn't help me i couldn't use my leg and them left me the last man tell me say i'm sorry so i'm sick but jesus never sorry because that's where I get my testimony. We can't play with the grace of God. I don't want to play with it. Because I never had to be here. I never had to. He never had to choose me to give me spirit to dwell in me. He never had to do nothing. He never had to. He just never had to. When you leave your house early in the morning and you come out, you know who's protecting you. You know, God is so good to us, so faithful, so kind. I appreciate you, Apostle. God is so good. Praise God. And when we humble ourselves and we, you know, just, just humble ourselves, we understand that he never had to do anything of the sort. That he has done for us. Never had to care, Pastor Stevens, here. Never had to stop you from your painting that you used to do. You never had to do it. You had a choice. He never had to brought you here. He never had to tell you don't wash this morning. He never had to save you when you did your last scheme. He never had to give you strategically located you to be here. Never had to do it. But God gives us a chance to make a choice to make that change in our life. And so many times we just, it's okay. We have food, we have shelter, we have clothes, we have a little cash. We're young, we can move. He's an untamed God. Yes, he is. On time, God, yes, He is. He may not come when you want Him, but He'll be there right on time. And on time, God, yes, He is. He's an on time God, yes, He is. Oh, on time, God, yes, He is. Job said, it may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. He's an on-time God, yes he is. 
yes. Well, he's a non-time God. Yes, he is. Oh, on time God. Yes, he is. He may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. Thanks. On time God. Yes, he is. Oh, he's a non-time God. is given much is required what do you say praise god standing we're going to worship a little bit and then we're going to get into the word and release you glory to god hallelujah lift those hands to jesus thank you lord thank you lord come on thank him thank him hallelujah Glory to God. Glory to God. He's a miracle working God. Hallelujah. Come on, lift those hands to him. You, Lord, you are worthy. Come on. And no one worship you for me. Hey. Come on. For all the things you've done for me. Hey, hey. And no one can worship you for me. Come on, say it again. You, Lord. You, Lord. You are worthy. Hey. And no one Worship you for me, for all the things you've done for me, for all the things you've done for me. Hey, no one can worship 
beautiful me is my worship. Here is my worship. All of my worship. Receive my worship. Oh, 
worship you. Come on, one more time. Say, you, Lord. You, Lord. Look. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. No one can worship you for. Hey. For all the things you've done. All the things you've done for me. Anybody agree for today? No one. So here is, here is my Come on, give him all the worship of the house. Receive my All my worship, yeah Here's my worship Oh yeah All my worship, yeah Receive my Oh yeah don't know you know and if it had not been for him ah oh, come on someone others might think crazy but you know you've been there hallelujah and he made you into a true worshiper to worship him in spirit and in truth. Come on, somebody. Mm. 
Aleluya. Oh, gloria. You came out your way. You sat down to speak to me. What a mean grace that you saw so patiently you saw so patiently and you come on it goes into you wait for me just for me oh come on you waiting Just for me. Oh. You call out my name. <laughs> Hallelujah. You my past cover my shame. This amazing grace that you show. So patiently you saw, so patiently, and you come on, send your way. You waited for me, so for me. Where would I be? Yeah. Hey, 
Come on, say you waited. You waited. You waited. You. Woo. Oh, you. You waited. Come on. Are you glad that they waited on you? You waited. Come on. Hallelujah. You. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Anybody grateful that he did? Anybody grateful that he did? Hallelujah. He could have cut us off in our sins. But if it had not been for the goodness of the Lord, here would it be. Come on, somebody. Somebody give him the praise in you. Are you glad about it? Yeah. You made a way. Come on. When my back was against the wall, and it seemed as if it was. Come on, say, you made a I'm standing here today, and I'm standing here today only because you made a way. Come on, you move mountains. You move mountains. Come on, sir. You cause words to fall in your power. Perform miracles. Perform. Standing here today only because you made you move a mountain. Come on, somebody. Hey, did it good for you with your power? Perform miracles. Perform miracles. There is nothing hey, that's impossible. And we're standing here today.
make a way for you. Oh, oh. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, worship me, you're so funny. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, he made a way for me. Tell somebody else, he made a way for me. Come on, come on. Oh God, are you glad about it? Come on, give God a praise. <laughs> you made a way. You made a way. Come on, give him praise. Oh, God. Bless the Lord. <laughs>